everyone, I'm JD, welcome back to my channel. Okay, well, I, I am finally getting around to announcing the winner of the Daphne's Diary giveaway. I'm so sorry, I said I'd announce it last week, uh, but I got caught up with writing that mental health art book over the Easter holidays, so I just didn't have time for anything else really. And then after that, I just I literally just kind of forgot about the giveaway announcing it. So finally getting organized, and I've got all the names written out here. And unfortunately, it was only available to those in Australia just due to um, postage costs. It's the weight range with this. It just is crazy how much it costs to post overseas. So thank you to everyone who entered. So many of you said that you love this magazine um, as well. And the question to enter the giveaway was what other magazines or books do you like using? So lots of good things there. Music paper came up and some other different magazines and uh, vintage books, children's books, uh, fun range of things. So I'm going to look away because some of them are popping open. So I'm going to look away now. So in case they have popped open, I won't see. And this is so exciting. Have I only got one? Is that one? Yeah, okay, that's just one. Okay. Um, all right, let's check out who the winner is. It is Carleen Cadman. Yay, I'm so excited because she is from the Junk Journals Down Under group. So it's fun when I kind of recognize the name. And she hasn't won any of my giveaways before. And I remember her comment. Um, saying yeah she really wanted I think I might have getting my comments mixed up but she wanted to be entered and liked this magazine so yay there you go Carleen um, if you can email me your address then I will send this to you as soon as possible uh, well as soon as you give me your address <laughs> I mean, look at these I'm so glad that I bought myself one and bought one for the giveaway because I'm going to be using all these beautiful images when I make my Daffy's Diary journals. Alright, so I'm going to just keep the video going. Um, I'm going to continue on with my art stories. This is series number uh, 10, 10 I think it is. And I think I just got to get through it. I can't stop, like miss this a day. Because if I stop, I'm one of those kind of people who... If I stop something, it takes me, I, I can stop forever and it will take so much effort to start again. I'm an all or nothing type of person, so I've started this, I've got to finish it, let's just do it. Alright, so this one is called Carpe Diem and it's one of my abstract pictures. I don't really do abstract often, but here is one of them. It was inspired by Dead Poet Society. Uh, that movie is very um i can see now why people say it's very impactful and just about life and how to live and um i don't know just having finding the fun in life and drumming marching to the beat of your own drum that kind of thing not conforming and just that's kind of like the craziness of this picture and the the beauty and the fun of life the joy and and that kind of part of life but also just go your own way be unique and that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, this picture here is called Handing It Over and it is about how um, being okay with the fact that your heart is on a journey. That I used to get so frustrated that my heart wasn't perfect, whole, fixed, whatever. And I, that would lead to my depressive thoughts you know, everything's terrible and it's never going to get fixed and la la la. But now I'm okay with it. Now I'm okay at seeing a, a sh uh, I don't know, broken, shattered, crushed heart. I'm okay with holding that and knowing it's all okay. <laughs> um, because it's on a journey and as you go through life and you journey with God and walk with Him, uh, you hand more and more over and He shows you more things to work on. And he's okay with the journey. He's okay with slow progress. He's okay with two steps forward, one step back. It was always me going, come on, God, let's fix this thing overnight. Let's do it now. <laughs> and he's like, slow down. It's a process. It's a journey. And it's okay. I'm okay with your heart like this. 
you need to be okay with it too. And I got to that point where I'm like, yeah, I'm okay with the journey. I'm okay with it slowly unfolding. And as I, every year I hand over another section of my heart, another piece, uh, as he reveals more. And sometimes we don't even know that we have a part of a heart that we've been holding back from him, but he'll just reveal it slowly in his time. Um, and so this is just about him using our heart and his working in it he's turning us into the rainbow of promise of joy and love and and uh, <laughs> also the gold and the silver represents you know his his in our heart and his good wisdom and purpose and all these gems he's putting into our hearts and it's beautiful this one is called there's beauty and brokenness sorry <laughs> that's like a subtitle there's beauty and brokenness this one is called <laughs> Um, walk by faith and it's all about how it's very specific but when I did beach mission you know it was terrifying I had to do all these things that I was terrified of doing um, acting singing leading a group a small group of you know running games with kids and being on stage and all of it living with a team of people um, doing mission together it was terrifying <laughs> back then all those years ago but after 12 years of beach mission, I've learned that when you step out in faith, God meets you there. I thought I would drown and flounder, but if he calls you out to do something, he will enable you and equip you with everything you need to do whatever it is he's called you to do. So that is that image. This one is about how... Um, at a time of my, of my life when I felt like the burden oh sorry the the living of life was a heavy burden and the yoke was not easy it was difficult there's this passage in the bible saying um that the yoke is easy and the burden is light when we you know follow jesus way and have him in our heart and i was just like where is this easy burden where is this light burden where's this you know like i can't see it and i knew that i was doing something wrong if i was feeling so heavy and such a difficult yoke and everything and so you know here's the easy yoke <laughs> and there's this song by chris tomlin that really spoke to me at that time just to rest in god's presence to spend time with god to find joy in god to find peace in god to find the easy yoke and the light burden in him that was the way to do it, to spend time with him. And it's represented by the table. That's the song by Chris Tomlin, The Table. Uh, and that we find everything at the table. We can find our peace, our rest, our restoration, love, strength, anything that we need. Forgiveness, healing. Um, so just make it a priority to always spend that time back with God. And then, you know... Um, He'll give you everything you need to go out into the world and live with that light burden and easy yoke. This one's just all about, oh, it's called Don't Rock the Boat and all about how people can, um, you want to live up to expectations and uh, please people and you want to um, have no conflict, I suppose. And so one of the ways that I thought to do that, like, was to, um, I don't know, suppress my own wants and needs and emotions and just kind of um, cling to dear life to sunniness. <laughs> so uh, that way it could be like, um, even though, for example, friends at school, when they were fighting or in conflict or whatever over some trivial thing, I would be like in the middle thinking oh no the world is so stormy and ah <laughs> and I would be always like oh don't rock the boat don't cause anything um I, I don't know even just in general even when things were going well I would be always like okay don't rock the boat don't do anything that my friends could accuse me of or blame me for or do something that hurt someone like yeah that was I guess <laughs> the main thing is like don't rock the boat just don't do anything that was the main thing um because uh, of that mindset, it was just like, oh, don't do anything. Just stay here and hold tight and cling to dear life to this mast of sunniness. Because if you even do anything, um, it's going to rock the boat and people will be affected and cause conflict or someone to be hurt or offended or something, you know. So uh, 
that is just a learning of rewriting the attitude and perspective um, that I can act, I can do stuff <laughs> in life and maybe like sometimes it may offend or hurt people but to learn that um, yeah it's not always up to you to please everyone. <laughs> my little kitty here is lying on my foot playing with a feather, a craft feather like it's dyed blue and he, he really likes it. <laughs> he's playing with it on my foot so I like that he's you know close to me <laughs> And I like the fact that he's playing with a feather and not my foot. <laughs> all right, this one's called The Best Yes, and it's all about how, yeah, I, I used to not have boundaries. I really, really struggled with saying no. I, I kind of took pride in being able to say yes all the time. But I had this philosophy that I thought that if someone asked me to do something and I could do it, then I had to say yes. Like, there, I've, there was no, there wasn't even a consideration in my head that no was a possibility that's how ingrained this idea was so but then I eventually through my depression and anxiety journey learned that you don't always have to say yes to people um, in some cases when it will affect your well-being if you just know you're super tired and you just can't do something but you can do it because like you just push through the tiredness but if you just know you're at the end of your rope and you're so tired and what you really need to do is rest but someone asks you to do this thing um, it wouldn't have entered my mind that I could say no <laughs> it wouldn't have entered my mind that I could go hey I just actually need to look after myself and rest all I would have think is well yeah I can do it I physically am able to do it so I have to do it um, but got to a point where I, I always used to love it I used to be like oh, yeah I'm helping people and it's great and making people happy but actually what I realized was underlying that whole thought process was if I say no that person won't like me if I say no that person will judge me and think I'm selfish if I say no that person will hate me if I say no that person will reject me so that was underlying this whole fear of saying no and so I had to learn that I can choose what I say yes and no to that I have agency that I have choice and that I can stand up for myself and look after myself and have boundaries um, so sometimes also uh, you can say yes to something because you feel like that's what God's calling you to but everyone else doesn't see it and they're like what is she doing uh, you're a fruit loop so that's what these fruit loops represent <laughs> you are crazy you're doing something that you shouldn't or I don't agree with that and that can be really hard and Ordinarily, I would have just given in to what everyone said and just been like, oh, okay, I won't do that then. But I've come to a point where I'm like, no, if God says to do something, I have to obey him, not obey people or all that kind of thing. And the way I can do that is because I trust in God, what he spoke to me. I can trust in the dream he's given me and the purpose he's given me. I can trust that what he's given me to do, it's giving, it has meaning for me. It gives me joy. I believe in it. I've got the vision, I've got the faith in it, it's a gift to me, like God gives this to me as a gift as well to do, and all these things remind me to have the courage to follow my best yes, give it my best yes, you can't say yes to everything, if you say yes to everything you're basically saying no to everything, because you can't, you split too far, you can't give your best. So that's the other idea, once you know what your best yes is for a season, because it might change depending on what season you're in, um, give it your best. And you can only give it your best if you are selective in what you say yes to. This one's a bit of a <laughs> schmozzle. But I, and this is going into some gelato pictures. So the others are in Prismacolor pencils. This one I was experimenting with gelatos, which allowed me to get more, a, a bit more abstract and freer because it's not precise. They're more like crayons. And this is just inspired by, <laughs> I went to see a musical, the high school musical. It was The Wizard of Oz. And I knew quite a few people in it um, from my church and the youth group. They were in it. So, you know, it was really fun to see them in it. But the first night that I went there, um, one of the guys that I knew, he and he was a main character, he was a scarecrow, fainted. And he, the show was cancelled. So, like, in the middle of the show, he fainted. And then they said, OK, everyone, come back tomorrow and we'll do the show again. And the next night we came back and they did the show again, but they changed some things. So he always sat down for his scenes. He didn't do his song. 
um, and people were always holding his arm just to make sure he wouldn't faint again. It was all safe. It was just that he hadn't eaten the day before, that's all. <laughs> um, and because of the lights on stage are really hot and everything, that's what caused him to faint. Um, so they were just putting in precautions just in case, you know, but he was fine. Uh, he got through it and he made jokes the whole time about it. <laughs> One time he was like, oh, don't worry, nothing can kill us except maybe a fall and a bump on the head because <laughs> he, he you know, fainted and bumped his head. <laughs> but yeah, he was fine. Anyway, the whole thing though, it brought the cast together and I saw that at the end everyone was just like, you know, we've suffered through this trial but it brought us together and we came out the other end and there was so much joy. I know that experience after a production or musical, it's just so much joy because you did it together and it's one of my favourite things about sport and doing things together is just that teamwork and everyone plays their part. Anyway, and so I just saw friendship in that scene, in this whole episode and it really spoke to me and I, I love seeing that. I love people working together in their different roles to create something special and enjoying it at the same time. I'm not sure if I explained that well enough, but it really is something specific to me that hits me <laughs> and speaks to me. This is called Light Through the Cracks and is just all about how, you know, in the in the world there can be darkness and things and brokenness, but in through those cracks, that's where the light can shine. And all about embracing brokenness and the, uh, a few of these, well, this one in particular was inspired by The Broken Way by Anne Voskamp. And she just goes into a lot about how brokenness, we can embrace brokenness. There is goodness in brokenness and there is God in brokenness in that he will use it to for his purposes. He will use it to bring light and um, even to see, take this with a grain of salt and take this from one perspective. Of course, there's a different perspective, but let's keep this one together. We can hold them in tension. It's a both and, not an either or. We can hold both perspectives together. Yes, there's horrible stuff in brokenness, but at the same time, hold this intention with the fact that um, God has a purpose in brokenness. There is beauty in brokenness and that there is a gift in brokenness. And I found that true to be to be true in my life, I used to reject brokenness and hate it and thought it was a bad thing. But the more I've experienced brokenness and seen the fruit that can come out of it, seen the beauty that can come out of it, I can now see that brokenness is a gift for how it brings us closer to God, to each other, to to the light, <laughs> to helping one another. You know, um, so much beauty. This one is called Firecracker and it's actually about that word I shared in a previous video how um, someone got a word for me or a vision of firecracker and that when I started doing the thing that I was passionate about that got my heart beating um, I would explode light everywhere like a firecracker and that for me is writing and I suppose creating as well when I do those things I nothing else matches the joy really I feel when I write and create uh, mostly writing, the joy that I feel at, with writing is at a different level to anything else. <laughs> um, and to know that when I do that, not only do I feel that extreme joy, but to know it will have an impact on others. Because that's what we do. When we are doing the thing we're made to do, it will be used to help others, whatever it is, whether it's building houses or being a stay-at-home mum or teaching or... Um, cooking food, whatever. <laughs> when you're doing it out of that passion and that joy, it will shine light everywhere. So this one I think is called Broken Heart and um, kind of more of an abstract picture about how, um, yeah, uh, you know, I've got Jesus in my heart, but sometimes it can feel like he's I, I, entangled or trapped because I'm not living the full um, I don't know, healed life or something. Um, and then there's this crack through the heart, the brokenness. Um, this locket kind of re represents a specific story, but I won't go into details. <laughs> I try to stay away from specifics. Um, but I think the general story is something that anyone can relate to. Um, just when you, um, I don't know, when you have this, um, when you tie up your identity into relationships, I suppose, and so that's what this locket kind of represents. And you can hold on to a relationship or a person or something 
and you um, feel like you can't let go of it because uh, it's too painful or whatever. And so I used to, that was the symbol. It's, it's very symbolic in that I would see, picture myself holding the locket. And for a long time, I couldn't let it go. I was just like, I, I'm not over this. I can't let it go. It's too painful. But eventually I learned, oh, no, okay, enough time has passed and I can actually let this go now and it's not part of me anymore. I release that. I've moved on and yeah, but this is just tracking that whole journey that um, is a process and to embrace the journey, you know, it's painful, it's unpleasant, but it's just part of life. Everyone goes through times of brokenness, times of rejection, times of hurt, times of feeling trapped, times of feeling, I don't know, messy. <laughs> so it's all just part of life. Um, this one's called One Beautiful Life and it's all about how when, like this represents kind of the brokenness and this represents going towards the light and joy and everything, the darkness to light and it was really symbolic to me. As I drew it, it spoke to me about how out of the brokenness, out of the darkness, that's where we, if we sink our roots down deep, the more life we will get. I mean, isn't that such an amazing revelation to get out of death comes life you know like and it just made me realize I want to sink my deep roots deeper like I want to in a way you know <laughs> take this again with a grain of salt and with attention hold it together in a way I want more darkness I want to experience more of that brokenness so that I can see more flourishing and fruit this represents that fruit and see more abundance in life if if that's what it requires, then yes, break me apart so I can see more life. <laughs> Sink my roots down deep, deep, deep into the darkest despair so that I can know what it's like to come out on the other side and the life and the richness that comes out is so much deeper, so much stronger because of that weight, that experience, that depth. <laughs> um, this one's called Explosion and just is a pure abstract representation of when your feelings can overwhelm you and you just don't know what to do with them and they don't come out but you want them to come out and so the only way I can express them is through drawing so this is my emotions coming out when I couldn't express them in any other way and I don't know purple represents confusion for me um, often in my drawing sometimes it doesn't but Usually, if I wanted to draw confusion, I'll use purple. And so it's just like a swirl, a cyclone of mess and thoughts and emotions. But there's silver flecks here, and silver and gold are used to represent um, that there's still purpose in this, that there's still God's plan in this, that there's still goodness. So that's why there are silver flecks. I'm not sure if you can see that. <laughs> this one is called Stuck. <laughs> Um, at the time I drew it, I just felt like I was stuck in mud and that I was just getting dragged down into this mud. Um, and this, uh, all the colours represent something, so it's the confusion, stuck in the confusion, and the yellow representing that I'm walking towards joy. I am getting out of the mud. I am stepping out of it and walking towards joy. don't remember what green represented. Usually it represents life. Or nature, I don't quite remember what it means here. Blue represents me, my identity. I just use it to represent, because uh, it's my favourite colour, I say that's me. <laughs> and then the pink represents the opposite of me. I often use maybe pinks or reds to represent the total opposite of me, because I don't really like the red side of the spectrum, in the colour spectrum. And so I use pink here to represent I felt like a different person. I didn't feel like me... Being, I wasn't being me, and I needed to get back to being blue. <laughs> yeah, that was a more abstract one. Same with the next two, but this is called ah, Lost. Really key um, lesson with this one, actually. So I realized I was feeling that feeling again of, I don't know who I am, where am I? I don't know where my identity has gone. And I caught myself, because I've learnt from my previous pictures, as you've seen, with my depression and anxiety journey. When I don't know who I am, when I'm feeling lost, it's because, usually, for me, because I've let outside voices and people in society, their voices have gotten too loud, and I've let them get too loud, and I've stopped listening to my own voice. And 
yeah, it was really key. As soon as I just kind of quietened down those voices, shut them out, and really listened to my own voice, that's when I found myself again. And so that's a nice key for me um, to always know I can do that and come back to that instead of spiraling, spiraling down and losing myself. This one's called Vision and all about how, yeah, it, while everything may seem swirly in life and messy and no clarity and the unknown, this is just all about you can have that vision and I can have that vision and I know what I'm doing and I believe in it because, you know, I'm, I believe I'm following God, I believe I've heard from Him and I'm going to chase after it and although other people might think, oh no, that's not right, that's messy, you can't do that. I can know through that mess of opinions to stay strong <laughs> with following what I feel God has called me to do. <laughs> okay, this is kind of random, but I sometimes get images and I, I get things spoken to me in my dreams. Um, things like I may get a song in my dream and I, when I wake up I can write out the song lyrics. Um, this time I got a picture and I just drew the picture that I got in my dream. <laughs> and so this is called The Dream Tree and it's just kind of like a whimsical one, Reach for the Stars. This is just something I've always had ingrained in me. I don't know if it's a Gen Y thing or just the way my parents raised me or something, but I always had that notion, yeah, that dream big, the sky's the limit, go for it. Um, and so that's just reiterating, reach for the stars, here's the stars, rainbows, there was some significance to that, but like the tree, it grows as our dreams grow. Here's the night, this represents sleep. I don't know, I was a bit more abstract, but there was some meaning drawn out of it that I can't quite hit on right now without going back to my notes. But yeah, I love it. Love this one too. This is called Lights, and it's actually just inspired by a picture that I kind of copied. Um... In, with my own interpretation. It's a really pretty picture. Uh, I don't know who the artist is, but their version was a lot more blue. There's a rainbow colored one. They've actually got heaps of this kind of style uh, and some are in blue tones, some are rainbow tones. So I just pulled up one of them on my computer and had it in front of me while I uh, did this one with gelatos and I applied water to this one. So it's kind of like a watercolor picture and it's just so beautiful. The colours are so vibrant. I love it. And the meaning that I'm putting to this one is your word is a light to my path and a lamp to my feet. That verse, which a friend pointed out to me when she saw this picture. Love it. <laughs> uh, well, this top picture, I don't quite remember what it was about. Again, sometimes my thoughts... When I try to draw my thoughts, if my thoughts aren't clear, then my drawing often isn't, doesn't speak to me in a clear way. Um, but I still wanted to express my thoughts somehow. So I think this is just about barriers and broken connection. And this is the scars and the brokenness and the wounds. Um, and this represents being blindfolded. This represents being able to see. Um, mess. So I, I often use symbols, so I can already pick that out. I know what that means. As a whole, though, I really, really don't actually know what this means. I think it's something about there's this barrier in front of me before I can see things clearly, and I need to, it's like this broken connection between, in a way, me and God, or what I know to be true versus what my heart knows to be true, and there's this just barrier stopping me from seeing something in a certain way and therefore living a certain way. I think... That's what it's talking about. I'm not too sure. I'll have to check my notes again with that one. <laughs> um, I'm going to stop there because it's getting up to the 29, 30 minute mark. And oh, we still have quite a few to go through, but we're getting through it. Um, and I think I actually am going to draw a couple more drawings at least. Uh, well, try to. Um, because I, with the mental health book, there are a couple extra drawings I would like to draw because um, the journey would fill out a bit more and I could explain a bit more if I add a couple more drawings. Um, so I might do that on camera and do it, do the outline and fill it all in on camera because that was a request from one of my subscribers for my 1K 
uh, milestones. So we'll see if that happens. Let me know if you're interested in that, if you're watching. <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching anyway, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!